Okay, uh, Orlando Silis here from Advanced Quantitative Reasoning, and today I'm going to go over a couple things. Uh, right now we're exploring this uh, data sheet called Length of Daylight, and this is an activity where we're going to go ahead and look at the um, the light as it as it goes ahead and goes, um, you know, from uh, they record the uh, the time from sun uh, sun up from sunrise to sunset. And so here's the recorded uh, days right here. And if you notice, this is recording all 365 days for the year, starting with one all the way up to 335. And the reason why we don't have 365 here is because all they're doing is recording the first day of each month. So the first day of each month, they record this data, um, which is over here. So this is in minutes. I know they're having hours and minutes here, but I don't want that because it's a little bit hard to work with. So everything is right here. So now we're going to go ahead and transfer this data. What, what the activity sheet says that he wants us to do is make a scatter plot. Uh, first off, they want us to go to make the scatter plot here on this graph. You know, we put all the little dots right here. You know how to do that, and, but we're not going to do that here right now. Now, also, we want us to go ahead and put the data inside of our calculators and produce a scatter plot on our calculator. Now, that's pretty easy to do with this new TI Inspire. So I'm going to hit on. I'm going to go right here to Data and Statistics, hit Enter, and there it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, click to add variables. So I can go ahead and use the mouse to go ahead and click right there, or uh, I can hit Tab, which is a lot easier for me. And the days and numbers are in X, and this is going to be my Y. Oh, and just to go ahead and show you this, let me go ahead and do this real quick. So there's the data right there. I hit uh, tab one more time, and I want the hours and minutes. And so there we go. And there's everything right there. Now, before you do this, now you've got to make sure that the columns have been named where you put your data, so that way the calculator can access it. I hit Control and right and back over here. Now it also wants us to go ahead and generate a sinusoidal regression model for this. So we're going to go ahead and do a regression. Hit on. I'm going to go to my calculator. I'm going to bring up a calculator. There's my calculator. Menu 6, 1, and the final one's going to be actually C because there's so many regressions that we can do on this calculator. And you can see that right there. It says sinusoidal regression. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that one up. I'm going to go ahead and tell this. I'm going to use day N for my X. And I'm going to tell it also that HM, or Houston Minutes, is going to be my Y. And if you notice here, it says save regression equation 2 F1. Now, this is, stands for function 1. It's going to actually put this in our graphing functions automatically. We don't have to tell it that. And that's the only thing I'm going to put on here. Hit enter, and boom, there it is. That's our function right there. So I'm going to write down our function real quick. So here it is. It's supposed to go right here on this chart under regression model for Houston, calculator form. But I'm going to go ahead and put it right here on this back right here so I can make this big enough. So let me see. What does it say? So it said to near to the uh, to round to the nearest hundredth. So it's uh, y is equal to 113.26 sine. I'm just following what it says right here. And I'm just replacing the a, b, c, d without, with those numbers. Uh, B is going to be 0 0.017, rounding to the net one. Uh, X minus 1.32 plus 727.37. So this is our function right here. Now, this is something, there's something a little bit strange about this because our parent function for this, or the uh, symbol, uh, symbolic function, is A sine b times, uh, let me see, uh, x minus c plus d. Now, these don't really match because I don't see another parenthesis behind this. And now it's not saying put another parenthesis there. No, it's not. Actually, this form right here, we have b times x minus b times c. So we've got to factor the b 
away from these two numbers. So let me see if I can write this out. So it's 0 0.017. And basically, I'm taking 0 0.017 divided by 0 0.017 times x minus 1.32 divided by 0 0.017. And then, of course, you have all the other stuff around here. So that's around here. Sine 113.26. And this is plus 727.37. I'm just going to do the math right here. These two cancel. And uh, well, let's see. 1.32 divided by 0 0.017. And that's 77. 0.65. So I'm going to rewrite this all. So this is going to be equal to 113.26 sine 0.017x minus 77.65 plus 727.37. Seven and there's our factored B form. And so that would go onto our chart over here on this side under factored B. And that's what we're doing there for that. Now we're going to graph this. Okay, so we're going to have to do a graph. Uh, I'm going to hit, uh, let me see, on. I'm going to put a graph. I notice I'm not going to graph this onto my other sheet because... This one, yes, I can do the graph, you know, and it's really, really easy to go ahead and do this here. Analyze, uh, regression, and you do show sinusoidal, so it does it real quick. Now, the only problem with this is that we can't use this particular graph to go ahead and get our min and the max using the calculator. So I'm going to go back to this one. Actually, I really need to go back to this one because I need a couple of pieces of information from here. I need to know my x max and my x minimum. So x max, or actually x min, I'm going to go ahead and start with that, equal to, so it says right here, it, it goes a little bit beyond zero, so I'm going to help that, negative 20. Uh, let me see, y, uh, x max, Okay, so we're going to put down 370. Okay, Y minimum. And here we see 620, so I'm going to go a little bit lower than that. So I'm going to go with 550, just to go ahead and see how that looks, just for the heck of it. And then Y max. Well, it says right here nine, uh, about 800, so 900. I'm going to put right here 900. So now I'm going to go ahead and enter this into my other sheet, so... Here's the graph, and if you notice, it says F sub 2. Remember what I was saying, that it was inside of F sub 1? If you just push up the up button right here, it brings it up, so there it is. And there's our function. Now, to be able to see it, we have to just press Enter. Well, I lied, because, well, you know, you don't have this right here, so I need to change that. So you hit Menu, uh, 4, 1. Now I'm going to change my window size. So this is going to be negative 20. Uh, this one was 370. This one was uh, 550 and 900. And then I'm just going to push OK. And there's our function, all nice and pretty up. OK, so that's how you graph the functions and everything. Now one more thing. Well, actually, there's a whole bunch of other things, but we're going to go ahead and do something else. So we've already done this part. Graph your model of your scatter plot. We can see that. That's really good. Connect the points on your paper, so you're going to do that on there. Use your cal calculator to determine the maximum and minimum values for the length of day in Houston. Record which uh, these pairs in your summary table and label them on your scatter plots. To which dates do the values correspond? So right here... I am going to go ahead and find the maximum of this. So I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, arrow, put it over the graph. I'm going to hit that. I'm going to actually just click on the graph, and right now you see it glowing. If you hit Control, then Menu, 
it brings up this menu right here and we're going to go ahead and analyze the graph and we want to check out the maximum so hit enter on that so you see now you have a little glove going like this you know that sort of thing and you have a line we put this line to the left of our maximum so our maximum is somewhere right here and you can notice it says lower bound this is good enough so I'm going to just go ahead and click on that now it's changed to upper bound so now we need to tell this that we need to go ahead and put a line or uh, shading the value over here to go ahead and make sure that we're we're going to go ahead and look for that maximum so I'm going to go ahead and bring this over and you can see that it creates this region so it's going to find out what the maximum y is here so I'm going to push enter and there's our maximum it even has it marked so the date for that for the maximum is let me see 172 comma 841 so we have eight hours and 41 minutes in mean, uh, 841 minutes of daylight that's for the maximum of this now I need to also do this for my minimum so I'm going to do my minimum so I'm going to bring this back I have I still have it selected I still have this graph selected or something like that I'm going to hit control menu it brings up the same one I want to go back to eight which is analyze graph and I want to bring up minimum which is option two so I'm gonna put this closer to my minimum and this is where my minimum is guys it's always gonna be on the right side right here so I'm gonna go ahead and just I can get it closer or I can just do it where it was click OK on that now it's asking for the upper bound so I go all the way to the right and you can even see it it's already calculating it click and there is our minimum which is 359 days and 614 minutes so to go ahead and find out the date I'm gonna go ahead and look over here I look over here my thing uh, let me see my maximum date is 172 so 172 well this right here is in between uh, June and July so I'm gonna take 172 and subtract 152 days in so 152 is actually July 1st so that's 20 days so 20 days after July 1st is July or June sorry 21st that's the date of this also this one if I do this one right here 359 well that's uh, this is right after December 1st so three three um 359 and we're going to subtract 335 from there so that gives us 424 days so this is december and 24 days after the first would be the 25th so december 25th christmas okay so there we go now we also need to find out how many hours and minutes this is so this is really easy to do I'm gonna go back to calculator oops there it is page three okay so now I'm gonna go ahead and do this so we take 841 divide that by 60 well it automatically does that I gotta remember 841 divided by 60 and I have to do control enter to go ahead and get the approximate so that's 14 hours and the number of minutes is basically going to be you subtract 14 then you're gonna multiply that times 60 and it's one minute 14 hours one minute and same thing over here so that's actually um, 10 hours and 14 minutes I know that just by looking at it but this is how you do it 614 divided by 60 so I don't remember to do that 10 hours and then you go ahead and subtract that 10 and multiply by 60 again to go ahead and get your remainder 14 minutes and that's it all right I'm getting kind of long in the tooth here, so I'm going to go ahead and let this go, guys, and stop.